uh, the module 8 uh, on ECS director training session. Uh, in this one, I'm going to cover on the bare metal agent. Uh, again, as described in the last session, it's a component that you will need only if you plan to deploy any um, bare metal server, like um, on UCS plates, maybe ESX, Linux, Windows, and whatever the supported operating systems are. Uh, in this one, I'm going to cover um, how to set it up in a bare metal agent, uh, what are the things you should take care, and how to install a ESX server. ESX, Linux, almost same process. Uh, Windows, a bit more, like you have to load the WinP, load the driver, <coughs> and then um, and then the process uh, kind of follows the same. Uh, let's start with uh, the concept. Um, so the bare metal agent can go like on Hyper-V and also uh, vSphere. It comes with OVA. I think uh, during the if you go to CCO uh, download page, that you'll see that the OVA is available. Um, the version you have deployed, like if it is six, uh, probably you'll get a six. Uh, your um, bare metal agent mm, you can download. Uh, deploy in the same way uh, for UCS director and it's managed by UCS director uh, over IP you don't really log into the bare metal agent to do anything uh, unless troubleshooting uh, and that will do today uh, but uh, uh, a, as an admin you should be logging into the UCS uh, director to manage bare metal so the model is a single BMA like I think uh, in the later version um, Cisco came up with uh, multiple BMA now, why you need multiple BMA? We don't need multiple UCS director, but we need multiple BMA because um, bare metal agents sends huge data push onto the operating system. Like if you are trying to install a Windows operating system, it's going to push huge data. You don't want the your um, it goes over the WAN. So each uh, data center and close to the you know where you're going to push the your operating system should be a bare metal agent. So this is a single uh, with multiple PXE VLAN. Um, yeah, there may be a use case of that, or maybe you have one management where you kind of ECSD connects and then BMA. You can have multiple BMA for multiple site A, B, C, D. This is also supported um, your setup. Now, how does it work? Um, we request a PXE. There's a task in the UCS director, in the task list that we went last time. Set up PXE boot. So in that one, you provide certain information to that. Uh, and if those who have done PXE boot, uh, it's probably the same thing. You need a MAC address, uh, and then MAC address, uh, and then uh, you know you provide certain information to that. You know management, VLAN, uh, network. Those things you require for being up a server. Uh, and then UCS director sends that information to the bare metal agent. A bare metal agent, uh, your um, gives a your. DHCP also requires request DHCP IP. Uh, that's just for the end of PX villain uh, and just for the boot purpose. After the your installation is done, you can move to any other villain, the uh, UCS server. Now, once it gets the DHCP request from the bare metal server, it sends a, uh, your response back with an IP address and then it uh, kind of uh, requests the PX boot information uh, to the bare metal agent. And once it sends, it has a file generated uh, based on the information UCS director provided. And then that is going to sit in a TFTP server. Once the you know, UCS blade um, kind of comes up and it gets that TFTP file downloaded and it see, okay, the next stage is uh, you get a, your, where the uh, binary file is sitting, all those locations there, uh, it kind of uh, downloads that, run the script, and then you know go from there. So we'll see that, like it's just kind of overview I'm uh, talking about right now. But uh, basically, there are uh, four services: PXE, uh, DHCP, TFTP, uh, HTTP, and uh, there is image repo. Uh, you can have NFS right now in the uh, latest version uh, because if you have multiple operating systems, uh, you're loading on the BMA. The size can be really, really big. And this is the internal file structure uh, of a BMA. Uh, we'll log into the BMA and we'll have a look at that. So here, there are two folders is important. One is the images, where you kind of keep all the images. Uh, like um, if I want to, oh, this one is for 5.5, you will um, you, um, update to. So there'll be a folder on the image folder. 
and then there can be multiple folders with different operating systems. And the template template has uh, another folder for the same operating system, and then you have three files: um, boot CFG, uh, PXE, and also the Kickstart okay, CFG. And the process, the way it works, the plan and configure the network infrastructure, what uh, we talked about so far, deploy the uh, BMA uh, VM, register the BMA with the UCS data, it's pretty straightforward these days. Um, so you just go into the GUI and add that. And then configure the DHCP server into the UCS directory GUI and process with the boot. Now, uh, when you um, kind of, if it is a POC or something, probably this structure would work. Uh, if you have one your um, VLAN and everything connects there. So UCS director, uh, bare metal agent and the server, everything is in that management or PXE VLAN. And uh, you know, PXE boot happens on the same VLAN and also the management. But if you can the production, I would think that's not pr very practical. So you have a second VNIC on the UCS director, bare metal agent. One of them talks to the management for UCS director. I think the uh, layer two, the top one would be only management and bottom one would be only uh, your PXE. Uh, this is a kind of typo. So um, it can be your data center management network, like you manage every other, um, your um, devices, like, you know, uh, VMware, uh, UCS, uh, NetApp, uh, that's the VLAN. And the, this one is dedicated uh, for the PXE and it can be non-routable. So it doesn't have to be routed to any other network. So it's a kind of private villain between the uh, UCS director and the your UCS uh, UCS director and the UCS uh, UCS director bare metal agent and the server UCS server. Um, so, yep. And then this is how we add it. So I'll probably show that on that um, your um, UCS director after I log in. And then you configure the DHCP server, give the your um, IP address range and uh, your router IP. It configures the DHCP server for you. There's a file, I think, um, those are Linux. Uh, it's a CentOS box. So that file, DHCP d.conf file is uh, kind of configured. And if you go, you'll see that uh, DHCP d.conf file. And then you add the operating systems. Once that is done, the infrastructure ready, uh, then you probably should add the um, operating system. In the case of Linux and ESX, uh, copy the operating system files into the ISO into the BMA. You can put it anywhere. Uh, then there is ISO extractor.sh file that does the magic uh, to prepare that. In the old age, like in the 4.1, you had to do it manually. So you copy that, you create all the files in the template folders and you know all the, these things you have to do manually. So, but this um, extractor script does the magic and everything is done straight away. So this is a kind of screenshot. Um, so you, um, this shows that you're in the OPT infra. The script is there. So you run that script and it will ask, give you the options of which operating systems you're trying to uh, add. Then you, provide the path, where is the ISO file you have copied, and then you have OS catalog name, what name it should pop up in the you know uh, list of operating systems. And then once it is done, it will do everything for you, and then you're good to go. And also these are the scripts available, but I don't think you'll need it ever, unless you have a hard troubleshooting. So uh, like stop infra dot all SH. And it's all in the OPT, OPT Infra folder um, to stop all the services for BMA, start all the services and uh, show BMA version. Uh, and the old age, like if you had to run the start infra all, uh, also you have to add the you know IP address of the UCS director, but now you don't have to worry about all those, uh, your job. So this is a screenshot that I added uh, your 6.0 version. Um, and also you can see the your uh, the operating systems listed in the uh, UCS D GUI. Once it is extracted in the image folders, uh, that folder is opt cnsa root image and the, the folder name, and all the binaries are kind of copied there. And once uh, the uh, the server which needs to be uh, your install the operating system, it'll pull all the uh, files from here. And you see that uh, if you go to the OPT CNS root template and then 
the same file name, you'll get the boot CFG, KCFG, and PXC. These have a very important role to play. This kind of in sequence it, it runs and then it makes the entire thing happen. So KS, KS uh, CFG you can kind of put any kind of command like you want to reboot the server, you want to add a V switch, you want to do some kind of task you want to run inside the operating system, you can add there. This is a kind of example of KS.script. So you can see on the top, uh, it's very small, uh, probably the for local boot uncomment in the your following line. If you're lo doing local boot, that uncomment this line, so it will install in the first disk. And if it is sand boot, then uh, uh, first disk equals remote. And then it is doing some CD temp, and then it uh, kind of uh, uh, doing its, whatever you want to do, you can add it here. Uh, Vim command, and then um, it's getting ready to uh, add the your ESX host for the next step. You can you know open the firewall. You can do some any command you can run in the ESX server. You should be able to put it here. There are some advanced features in you know, a boot from SAN is one of them. Uh, customize OS images and uh, multi-site solution. Microsoft Windows deployment um, is a bit tricky. Uh, we'll not cover in this session. Uh, probably we'll have another sessions for Windows deployment. Yeah, that's the session. Now let's go into the real business. So um, you have installed the BMA, uh, deployed the, uh, your VM, and you would like to add to the UCS director. Now um, the default username password for the BMA is um, the root uh, account, uh, PXE boot, um, PXE boot, yeah. And uh, you don't need to log in there as long as you can reach from here. And then you come here and BMA legend there's already one added so you have to make sure it's reachable so if you click on add then uh, name then this is the management of uh, px so if you say that you have a separate interface then it will give you option management and the px and probably in production you will need to do this one uh, login id to the uh, root and then whatever the username if you have changed it about Samba services for Windows PXE. And then this is the database server. This is the, your UCS directory server IP address is here. And you can put the location that which site it is. And once it is, you have added, so you have to do the configure the DHCP. So you can put the IP address range here. Netmask can start an IP. And so once you do that, it's pretty much you know, configure that uh, DHCP um, file. And you can see it here. So that's the file actually you see, DHCP conf. Uh, uh, there's a sample file there, uh, means again, in the old days, you have to kind of copy that and uh, rename that as a DHCP conf. Uh, but uh, now uh, it does it for you. Once you have done, you are pretty much good to go and can probably stop start services. Uh, there are a few places you can see your like, you know, logs, BMA logs, DHCP logs. Okay, the BMA is ready. Now the next step is, yeah, you want to test it. Uh, okay, is it ready? How do I, you know, make sure that it is ready? Because it can be very challenging. If you are trying to install a, on a UCS server, um, how many things you have to do? You have to prepare the UCS server with the service profile, um, then get the your uh, blade installed, and then you have to set up a task uh, in the UCS director, and then, you know, there's a lot of hassle there. So there's a quick way that you can bypass that and uh, make it uh, a test on, the, um, on a VM. Uh, after you have kind of installed the, uh, your, your uh, added the operating system. Uh, I would like to go to the BMA, and kind of have a look around that. Okay, this is the BMA. Uh, so let's go into this CD uh, OPT infra. So these are the files uh, in the OPT infra. And uh, as I mentioned before, that these are the scripts available to run. isoextractor.sh, very important uh, file uh, to add the operating system. So um, 
in the uh, temp folder, I think I copied a ISO, and I can probably just run through, just show you. Yeah, there is one for 6.0. So let me just copy this one, show that how can I add this one, uh, copy. And then city. Infra. Okay, now if I run the ISO extractor, oops, sorry. Then it gives an option that what is the operating system you want to add. So let's um, put it uh, five. So image path, now it will ask for the image path, um, TMP. And then I paste the name of the ISO file, enter. Catalog name, now it's a demo one, so uh, maybe I'll just say ESX6 demo. That's all. It's gonna add you, it's gonna do everything for you and your operating system is ready. How do you see this operating system is ready? So you go to the folder um, OPT, um, CNSA root, and okay, let's go here and see where the folder is there. There is a folder images. That's where you, all the operating system binaries are held, and the temp is the boot dot uh, in that three config files. CD images. Sorry. So you can see here this demo. This um, your is created here. Six. So you can see all the files that is required to uh, be downloaded to the Blade and to install the operating system. It's here, and then the template. Oh, sorry, I went to the root. OPT, CNS root, template. So same thing, and the folders are here for by operating system. So, X, uh, yes, X, six, demo. So these are the three files. So um, these files, uh, let's see one by one. Uh, this just says what are the files you need to download to get the operating systems uh, going. Then this file um, kind of shows that what script it runs once you uh, kind of get the binaries. So you can see that um, it has the it gets a password that you provide in the setup. Uh, all the variables with the dollar sign it'll get from your input once you set up the PXE boot. Um, IP, the net mask, gateway. You have to provide these things during the you set up the PXE boot uh, in the workflow. It's a task. So you can modify this stuff to make it work. So it looks like this is for local disk and uh, not for send boot. So this is not gonna work for send boot. If you want to get it work for send boot, then you have to unmark, uncomment this one and comment the, that one. Yeah, so that's the KSCFG. Again, I'll show that this is not the actual script that runs. So it's kind of copied to another place and that's where the your file runs. And the last one is uh, CFG. So it, in the name of that level and then while you'll get that, you know, um, config files, uh, there is a PXE ID for each one. Uh, this is very important that web.ks uh, is repository and that there's a number for each uh, your PXE boot, uh, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. And it says that there is a boot config and you run that and it kind of goes for the next one. That's the case uh, .cfg. It can sound a bit complex, but you know, um, 
if you kind of do a few times, you will know exactly. And if you kind of get stuck, that's probably the best way to learn. Um, normally, it works smoothly. You never know it. But when it doesn't work, then you have to see that what is the trouble. Uh, I would not go now uh, to the latest. So, okay, let's want one more thing. Mm. Uh, OPT, CNS root. Every time you try to uh, get a PXE boot, there's a file generated here. And once it is done, then it is completed mark. And if you, this is kind of once the uh, request comes from the UCS director, okay, set up PXE boot, at that time this file is created. This is a test I was running, so you can see that here it says uh, what is the operating system and you know install. Uh, this comes from the UCS to input, from your input, and there is the your boot.cfg. And then this is file downloaded um, through the TFTP to the uh, blade, and that it starts working on that. Uh, when you go into the next uh, your session, which is a boot from send, this will make more sense. Uh, now, for now, I'll just show you a test then, you know, if our BMA is working fine or not. Um, this has to be, uh, status should be active. Uh, to make an easy test, what do you do? You would uh, make a, just deploy a, a VM. That doesn't have to be anything. A new virtual machine. You don't have to install an operating system here. You just uh, I'll just test that the connective BME is working fine. It's kind of send the PXE. It gets the TFTP server, tries to download that TFTP file, and move from there. That's what I'm trying to test. Okay, that's the. Uh, you don't need that, that's okay. Just will do anything. And the compatible with 5.5 and later. And operating system is Linux. Whatever, um, CentOS. Okay. Now, I would need the MAC address of this guy. So, um, Put it anything uh, like you know um, maybe two two copy this one I just copied the MAC address because I'll need that later um, the VM is getting provisioned. There is our. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to open the uh, VMRC console uh, to this VM. Okay, it's ready. Now, um, what I'll do, I'll set up the PXE boot in the UCS director. So if I go back to the UCS director, This can be non-intuitive, like uh, unless you know it, you know that why would the, why it should be there. So it's in physical compute. Uh, select a pod, PXE boot request, and then you add the boot PXE boot. You're manually creating this one. Uh, normally this is done by a task automatically for you based on the input, but I'm just testing if the connectivity is okay or not. So uh, MAC address. That was the you kind of put the host name, whatever, test, password. Uh, this is not for, it does not matter. Server address. Mm. 
doesn't make sense but okay we're not going to use it any of these just just kind of uh, filling up the forms because it's kind of ask you and also time zone doesn't matter <clears throat> okay now that's ready that PXZ boot uh, only thing I need is the MAC address based on the MAC address once we boot the server BMA will uh, uh, <coughs> uh, use will request the BMA for the IP address it will send the IP, uh, BMA will send the IP address and then it will also uh, send the TFTP file that this is the config file for the operating system <coughs> sorry one thing probably I did not show you is here is the operating system um, you have to that's all the way down so this is the I'm kind of selecting you can choose anything I'm just selecting 5.5 E1 and then this is the only BMA we have here and then you have to set up the px environment It's now going to uh, create that file okay before we do that let's go and check on that um. so there's only one right now it is completed uh, but let's do that uh, this setup as soon as you do the setup okay and then oh sorry then you have to start the um, your um, VM oh okay I think I kind of know the mistake here because we did not get the um, villain so network has to be in the um, 1830 because that's the uh, yep. Okay, let's reboot that. Okay, see, it's still started installing the operating system. It got the TFT file so quickly. If it didn't get, then it would complain. So if you see here, it should be another file. So that's the one. And if you see uh, the file content here, 562. So it's kind of getting that boot CFG, downloading those uh, your files, then go for the next step. So, but our BMA is working perfect. So we don't care about rest of the stuff. We'll stop it and go for next. So this is a quick way to test that your um, things are working fine now there is another place um, you can check that um, the information you provided you know that fake information one one those are populated in the um, ks.cfg now um, all the scripts with the inputs coming from the UCS director it's kind of uh, sorry okay, start repository so there's a, a PXZ boot number for each one so if I go back 25 the ID for the PXZ boot so let's go to 25 here so the if, uh, location is like okay opt cns root web case repository that's the location now if you go to that id you'll see those files there and then if you open like cat um, case.cfg so you can see this this um, file which was kind of waiting for the variables has been populated with the information like like netmask ip 11 on this fictitious information we provided gateway 114 villain id if you give name server the host name and this will be the actual script that will be running on that so a quick way to check that what you're expecting like if it is kind of not finding the disk maybe it did not kind of edit this one so uh yeah something to look out we'll have a dedicated session for the BMA troubleshooting with UCSG troubleshooting uh, at the time probably we'll cover more details 
for now uh, let's see if I have left anything otherwise we should be good um, yeah that's probably troubleshooting sessions nope that's all so that's all for BMA uh, next one would be um, how to use the BMA in a complex workflow so would be uh, doing a UCSD um, bare metal installation of an ESX server uh, and they'll have multiple things like um, on UCS side few things to do your um, MDS side few things like zoning stuff NetApp uh, LAN and you know um, IG group creation and then you know, install the operating system through this you know BMA and then add to the vCenter there'll be an entire process and uh, we'll do in a kind of next uh, your uh, presentation hope it was useful and uh, feel free to comment uh, on my presentation thank you thanks for watching